Well then, here we are again, down at Lillybrook. Today we're going to be trying to break 90. So we've been playing a while with just the hybrid. Now it's time to put some bigger clubs in the bag. We're going to need some more firepower. Now you're used to hitting off a small tee peg, so putting the 3 wood and the 5 wood in the bag shouldn't be too much of an issue. But on those wider holes where you've got a really big fairway, then it's time for the driver. Now, a lot of club fitters are going to try and put a low spin driver in your pad. Sorry, I'm laughing because there's, there's acorns falling out of the oak tree here, crunching onto cars. So don't park underneath the oak trees this time of year. They're going to try and put a low spin driver in your hand. Now the trouble with a low spin driver is, well it's low spin. So you have to launch it and you have to use the middle of the face. And when you use the heel and the toe and the bottom edge, and you'll forgive me for saying this, but at this stage where you are a 23 handicap, something like that, you're not using the middle of the face too often. And what that means is the ball falls out the sky. So that bunker at 200 yards that you're planning to get over, if you don't use the middle of the club, you're not getting over it. The ball flight will be far too low and you're going to uh, rack up some shots. So what you need is the old game improver. Now Ping makes some cracking game improver clubs. The one I've got is the Mizuno JPX Easy 2016 model. It didn't sell because it's grey. So there's loads of these about. If you look carefully, you'll find these brand new still in the wrappers. And it's adjustable. Now at the moment, I would seriously suggest that you use 12 or 12 and a half degrees. Get a bit of height, a bit of backspin, which helps it go straight. The other thing with these adjustable drivers, when you add aloft, it just slightly closes the face by about one degree. So it'll help you straighten them out as well. So we're gonna assess each hole. We're gonna look for the acorns falling everywhere. We're gonna look for the worst case scenario. And again, we're gonna try and avoid the worst case scenario. And we've now got four clubs to go off the tee with. We've got the driver, we've got the three wood, got a five wood and we've got the three iron slash hybrid. I don't know why five woods aren't popular. They're bloody good clubs. I prefer a five wood to a stronger hybrid. It's got that larger body. It's slightly more forgiving. It suits me. So I'm going to change the loft on this to 12 and a half degrees. I'm going to play the same as you and then we'll uh, get warmed up here in this net before we go to the tee. Now, the reason why we warm up is the first shot of the day is the most important shot of the day. It sets us up for the day. If you slice one behind the trees on the right, because you haven't warmed up, then you're hacking and you're hacking again and you're walking off the first with a double or a triple and then you're behind the eight ball and then you're under pressure. Now the other day I hit a hybrid down the middle we need a little bit more than a hybrid, we want to be closer than that, but perhaps not the driver, unless of course your first hole is exceptionally wide, but we need a warm up so we have some idea how well we're hitting it and where the ball's going. Now granted in a net the ball doesn't travel very far, you can't see where it's going, but you can certainly feel where it's going. So let's get, get in here and then we'll get on the first tee. Well, I managed to avoid the worst case scenario down the right and instead I'm down the left. But at least down the left you've got a recovery shot. Down the right, half the time you do not get a chance to get anywhere near the green. Taking the sand wedge here just to eliminate this slope in the foreground. Just gonna to toss it into the middle of the green and let it run out. 
Notice the length of the backswing and the length of the follow through, more or less equal. This keeps us accelerating through the shot. Go with the five wood. I seem to be able to turn this club over, so I might as well go with it. Worst case is down the left and into the rough and a lost ball under the leaves. So I can aim this out to the right and just turn it over a fraction. Job done. And now I'm actually in the fairway properly. I can ignore the big tree, I can ignore the bunker on the left and go straight down the throat of the green. Just as long as I take enough club to take them all out of play. And I'm glad I did have enough club because I finished up on the left side. Didn't exactly go right down the middle. And uh, I struggled with the pace of the greens all day today, so you'll see quite a bit of this going on. Well, hopefully by now we should be hitting our hybrid reasonably straight and the right distance. Can't miss this to the right, so you notice I always aimed a little left. Let it turn to the right on the wind. And just for once, I actually hit a decent one. Worst case is in the trees on the left and being completely blocked out from the green. So I can take driver here, it's a wide fairway. I normally hit a fade. When everything suits you, you can release the club quite, quite well. Awkward shot. I'm just playing for the front. I'm aiming to allow for what the ball's gonna do with the slope. Very difficult to uh, turn the ball against the slope, so you might as well go with it. Right, it's a little silly really, me doing a how to break 90. Well, I've started with three parts, but it's about the process. It's about assessing the difficulties and playing away from them. Like there, I had 157 down slope, ball below my feet. There's a bunker left and right down here that we don't want to go into. So I've let the slopes do what they want. I've pulled the seven iron, played for the front edge. And that's exactly what we've got. Now I know you're going to say, well, I, when I'm on a down slope, when a side slope like that, I slice it. We'll take even more loft. Take an eight iron, take a nine iron, get down here 30 yards short of the green, Chip it on and single putt. That's what we're here to do. So short game, short game, short game and get rid of the double bogeys. This is stroke one, so if you're a 19 handicap, you get two shots here. I'm hitting the five wood quite decently, so I might as well stick with it. To reach this green would require a four iron, and I don't fancy that. So I'm just gonna play for the front edge with the six and then we can chip and putt from there. Oops, I've done it again. 
This is not very pretty at all. Bad light. I'm just going to play for the front, sort of 20% of the green. Chip and run with the pitching wedge. And I chunk that so it hasn't reached. Very, very tricky. If I want to get this close, I've got to hit this down the fringe, really. Heavy slope from right to left. And I'll be the first to admit, if I hadn't have hit that flag, I was staring down the barrel of a double bogey. But then, it's two shots if you're, if you're a 19 handicap, so a five is still good. Worst case scenario here is deep in the trees on the left. You don't want a 40 yard slice either, so the driver's staying in the bag and I'm going with a five wood down the right half of the fairway and get it onto the flat. Flag is cut on the left front. It's well away from the bunker on the right. So we might as well go straight at it because there is no penalty for a miss here. Yep, nobody is immune from the three jab. supposed to hit a bloody six iron. Out with the driver again, big wide fairway. Worst case is into the trees on the right. But I rarely go in there, so there's, there's plenty of space down the left here. Except I didn't get it down the left. Left me this awkward shot. I'm going with the four iron. I'm going to hit a low fade again. I'm not going to try and keep it knee high. I want it uh, a little higher than that and get a little bit further down the fairway. And unfortunately, I've hit that right through the middle of the tree. Now I've got to hit another fade. Just ever so slightly overdone, but that's the safe place to be away from the bunkers on the left. Now instead of chipping from the top right, I'm putting from the top right. So as I remember putts, and you need to do this, remember things, you should have a good chance of laying this dead. Well, it's a beautiful afternoon, except for the pace of play. I'm waiting on every shot now, which is a shame. This is very hard for me to do as a single figure golfer giving advice from before 23 to get to 19, to get to that thing that's got a teen on the end of it. Because I am going to hit it straighter than you. I am going to chip and putt better than you. So it's very difficult, you know, I'm making pars where you might be making bogeys. I'm making bogeys where you might be making double bogeys. 
but the process is what we're after here. Forget my scores. The process is assess the worst case scenario and keep away from it. You'll notice I've only used the driver twice and this is going to be the third time. The next time I use it is going to be on the 12th. Then I'm going to use it on 15 and 16 and 18. So I'm not using the driver much. I'm putting loft in my hand. I'm putting a shorter shafted club in my hand, which is easier to hit. Yeah, they've... it's okay, you can't reach the green from there. I promise you, it's, it's 300 yards, mate. They're waiting for the green to clear from 300 yards. So this is very difficult for me. And it is so, I suppose, patronizing. But follow the process. Stay out of trouble. Get rid of the double bogeys. I promise you, no matter what your handicap, even if you're a two handicap, you cannot make enough birdies to cancel out the double bogeys. Even Rory McIlroy can't make enough birdies to cancel out three double bogeys. So play safe, swing smooth, stop trying to knock the cover off the ball, get your lessons. And this is an ongoing process. I've been playing golf, well, the first time I had a putter in my hand, I was six years old and I'm 55 and I'm still having lessons and I'm still practicing hard when the back will let me. So um, let's finish out this ninth hole and then we'll uh, do a second video for the back nine as per usual. And the reason I split them into nine holes is because I like to play golf without this thing. If I was checking these out as an 18 hole video every time, then I'd be under pressure to video every time. And I don't want to video every time. I'm just an ordinary golfer like you. Worst case is the trees on the left because you get blocked out. You don't have a shot at the, down the hole. Trees on the right, not so bad because you always get a, uh, get a bit of a break over there. I did not see this at all. Such is the strange light this afternoon. And this has gone a long way down for a 12 and a half degree driver. As you can see, I'm blocked out. Worst thing I can do is scuttle this across the fairway into the trees on the right. So you've always got to have a little bit of caution with these kind of recovery shots. And yeah, I am all the way across, but because I was cautious, I haven't gone in the trees. So I just hit this into the middle of the green, take me bogey and get out. But that stopped dead. I was expecting that to bounce hard and charge down the green and well, it, it just didn't. Have you noticed that when you hit one bump and it turns to the right, the next bump it hits turns it to the right, and the next bump it hits turns it to the right. Never gets turned back again, does it? Anyway, see you for the back nine. Cheerio.